Welcome to the uh, Town of Long Beach uh, Town Council meeting for the month of August. Uh, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, I guess uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve the town council meeting minutes from June 10th. I make a motion to accept those minutes. I hear a second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Do I hear a motion to approve the town council meeting minutes of July 8th? I have to abstain. I wasn't here. I can move that we accept those minutes. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, do I hear a motion to approve the Town Council special meeting minutes from July 18th? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opening remarks, I have none. Police Department report, Chief. The month of July 2019, 47 people walked in. Uh, I'm sorry, 51 people walked in. Total dispatch calls was 475. Traffic stops were 68 stops, 18 citations, 19 written warnings, 31 verbal warnings, 4 parking citations, 3 vehicle impounds, 19 suspicious subjects were checked, 11 suspicious vehicles, 20 courtesy services, 16 ordinances violations were checked, 34 alarms for the month. Should be done this month. That should be no problem. 
Um, budget requests have been in, in, incorporated uh, in our budget for this year. Um, of course, we're going to be having a, a budget meeting a hearing on September 23rd, I think, is that Bill? Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah, September 23rd, we'll have a hearing on, on the budget. And that's about it. Volunteer Fire Department report, John. For the month of July, we had nine fire calls, four were hazardous conditions, including gas leaks, carbon monoxide, power lines down. We had five false alarm calls. Here today, the average turnout of personnel for a fire call is nine, and the total number of members responding, 441. Medical calls in the month of July, we had 10 calls, three injuries, two sick people, an unconscious victim, one drowning call, two lift assists, and a medical alert. The average uh, turnout for medical call is five, and the total number of responding members is 356 for the year. The average response time for fire calls is 5.2 minutes. The average response time for medical calls is 5.2 minutes as well. Um, that's it. We had the ice cream social earlier in the month of July, and that was a very successful event. Great turnout. I think everybody enjoyed it. That's, that's it. Fire Commission. I believe there was we no did not meet. We're kind of in the summer mode right now. I think probably the, the September, the September meeting. Yeah. And Street Department. I didn't see Tom here. Does anybody have that? Yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll just do a combination of Street mm -hmm. Department and Commission. We met in July. Um, couldn't get in this room. We'll have to remember to arrange that before the meeting. But we met out there and and. Uh, just talked about all the the paving that was done and and the cleanup projects we had for um, for Walsh and Kelly to come and we think they did a good job in following up and that is complete and um, Tom is just uh, uh, been going around and managing drainage issues. And then we will go on to um, leave. So that's the end of my report. And that was Street Commission and Street Department combined, right? Yes. Okay. Park Board Joy. Park Board met on 723. Uh, they discussed stock updates. Recently completed stock work. River rock was added to stock 20. The grass was aerated and new soil delivered. Grass will be grown there. Invasive species and weeding took place at stock 21. Area previously blocked off by landscape rocks and tiny plastic buckets of flowers have been removed to create a safe pulling space for the 10 minute loading and unloading. Dune grass will be planted in the fall in this area. New water control, quality control signs have been installed and updated from a Port County Health Department. The monitored stocks are 24 and 14. Sod was laid at stock 22. Park board met with resident Bob Kuchler and contractors to discuss stairs at 24. Shortly after plans were made, storm came through and washed out the area. There's no feasible area to put stairs that don't go beyond the ordinary high water mark and wouldn't get washed away immediately. The Kuchler family agreed that the best thing to do was wait until the completed stop 24 rehab was done and not to try and build temporary stairs. New roofing shingles were put on the picnic shelter at the town center. Um, ongoing projects, permits, plans for stop 18 rehab will be submitted to the building commission this month. And I've been asked to read these two following letters. One was sent to the town council in care of me, stated July 1st, 2019. The rehab of stop 18 entrance has been detained due to Tim Perry's obstinance and it has inconvenienced all. Our older residents and their visitors who find it difficult to traverse to the lake are missing beautiful sunsets. Currently, the land usage benefits one family compared to the whole community. Besides being a legal issue, it is a monetary issue. The land is valued at hundreds of thousands of dollars. Tim Perry purchased the land from his father to bypass the laws. Several months ago, the Perrys removed their shed because they knew it was not on their property, proving that they are well aware of their lot line. We, the residents of Stop 18, ask the Perry family to cordially refrain from using our pristine lakefront property so that it may be enjoyed by the greater good as it 
was properly intended. Should anything be parked in the driveway, be it one of the parent cars or one belonging to someone else, we, the Stop 18 residents, request to have a police and forest tow truck removed immediately. Let the rehab of our communal Stop 18 property commence. It was not signed except by the Stop 18 residents. This one is really dated July 6, 2019, to the town of Long Beach. Over the holiday weekend, it was brought to our attention that the Perry residence, 1802 Lakeshore Drive in Long Beach, still has not complied with the building code set forth by the town of Long Beach. However, they build their house and continue to adversely possess land that belongs to the town. We, as a Stop 18 collective group, feel that they should have never been given a building permit in the first place until a driveway dispute and land possession was cleared and rightfully deemed Stop 18. However, now the Perry's continue to use the driveway after it is clearly marked as town property and the town has allowed them to park there. If they can park there, why can't others in the area park in that spot as well or keep beach chairs, etc. there? Stop 18 was to be done the summer of 2018. However, it is continuing to be delayed because of the driveway issue. The town should block it off and not permit anyone to use it until this dispute has been cleared up and the town can start work to do it by Stop 18. The Perrys have used the property for their own benefit far too long and now that has been surveyed in state to know what is town property and what is Perry property. The Perrys should not be using it for their sole benefit. Please consider moving forward and taking out all the overgrown bamboo and other invasive brush along the path to the beach at Stop 18. The walkway boards are unsafe, the concrete is uneven, and concern for injury. The brush and bamboo are getting in the way of the path, so some of us have taken it upon ourselves to cut it down so we're not tripping all over and getting cut by the branches. Best regards, Stop 18. You know, last, last month I, in my opening remarks, talked about letters that people didn't sign and how I thought they were somewhat inappropriate. And I haven't changed my mind um, whether they say they stop 18 or not. And I understand why they may not want to pick a personal fight with the Perrys, but I'm not sure that the town council meeting is where we ought to be reading unsigned letters. I, I was told that people wanted to hear more from the park board, and this is what the park board gave me to read. Okay, so I, I guess maybe if you could just ask my feelings out of the park board. We'll do it. Community center? Wait, I, oh, that sorry. wasn't the end. Uh, there are ongoing projects, uh, permits and plans for new metal stairs at 22 will be submitted to the building commission this month. These are stairs that lead directly onto the sand. Metal will be used at this stop and in the future at other stops where the water levels are too high to construct wood stairs. The current metal stairs at 22 have been there since the Army Corps of Engineers seawall was put in and they have outlasted any other stair structure in town. We will improve upon current stairs. Another reason to choose metal when possible is that the sand will naturally fall between the grates which makes them safer than wood stairs that tend to hold onto sand and therefore create a slippery Environment. Invasive species at the other beach stops are being addressed. Stop 19 will be cleared this week of a large amount of Phragmites on the east side of the stop and blue line grass on the west side. Projects in the queue, stop 14 will be addressed hopefully this month. We originally stopped planning work at 14 when it was thought to be the ADA potential project. Once 18 is underway, we can address 14. Stop 28 will be the next in line for rehab, neighbor meetings, and the talk with stop captain has begun. We will ask for input from residents at the August meeting for both stops 14 and 18. Open items ongoing, access to beach at many stops 23, 24, 26 has changed dramatically this year with the record water levels. And it's not possible to build stairs that won't get washed away, at least wooden stairs. The sand levels change daily with each water pattern. And some days to step down to the sand at 23 is completely even with the stairs, and other days it's more than a foot. This is Mother Nature, and there's nothing we can do about it without making drastic and costly changes to the stop. The next park board meeting is August 27th at 6 p.m. Um, any questions? Uh, just one add. Some lady came in today and said the North Handrail stopped 23. And so I, you know, I'm not allowed to go out in the sun, so I really don't know what's going on. Stops by itself. So you, I had to give it just a mystery to me. She also commented on this thing, and I explained to her that the beach washes in and out, but there was a big stop. There was a big step at stop 23 before it was with my vintage, and she said to me that. Uh, I didn't use rails, and I didn't know there were handrails there. There's handrails.
trails that go down, but the the water and sand. I mean, it sands and wash out. So there's a big drop off. Yeah, we had a lot of people who were reporting, which is that I assumed there were no handrails, but there you said there were just handrails at the bottom that were not. Okay. Community center report, Joy. Uh, the community center did not meet in August uh, due to Labor Day. The September meeting will be held August 26th at 4 p.m. Room 12 at the community center. And although we don't have a spot for land conservation, I would like to say congratulations to Dr. Yehas and the Land Conservation Committee for holding their first annual Long Beach Nature Hike on our Waste Hog Trail, which I understand was very successful. Water board, Nick. Uh, just two two items. One, uh, we've worked with Angela to get all of the minutes up for 2019 currently on the website, so those are available. Um, the second item, we sent this out via news uh, email to the town, uh, and I think it went out in some other communications as well. But you may have um, residents may have noticed their bill in July um, that they will be receiving here in August. They would have been mailed out at the end of end of July. Would have appeared to be higher because it captured more days. Uh, uh, of meter reading didn't bill you for additional usage but um, we're trying to move to a calendar month versus mid-year to mid-year so your your bill um, for your August usage that you'll be billed for in September or due in September that will reflect more of a normal type of a usage so um, you should notice a bit of a change if you have any questions reach out to Angela and the, and the water department uh, next meeting August 26 okay um, budget and finance Pete uh, because of the calendar, uh, the meeting, the budget finance meeting will take place this Wednesday, 8.30, right here. Okay. Uh, human resource bill? Uh, no meeting. Uh, building commission, Pete? Um, well, we didn't have a building commission meeting. No report. Um, well, I think we had one. Um, it's been a while now, though, since we canceled this last month. But due to the calendar, we did have one on July 12th, which was after our last uh, town council meeting. Um, and I'll just hit the highlights, because uh, you don't have it, I think. Um, 2943 Lakeshore Drive, there's a retaining wall. Uh, um, there was a pool also. Um, the wall needed to be cut down. The pool was approved. At 2309, uh, retaining walls and planter height, uh, the owners, they didn't follow the original plan, and the uh, owners and contractor decided to go back to the original plan, so that's been resolved. In 2909 Lakeshore Drive, there was a stop work order issued for work beyond the scope and size of the approved drawings. The deck was larger than approved. Uh, also, a landscape block was put in the front yard, and a stop work order was issued there. And those were the highlights of the, that building commission meeting. For the next uh, no, but I'm going to try and see if we can't get it going for Friday. So that's the plan to be Friday. i got to talk to Larry Wall about doing it. Okay. Uh, BZA report, there was no meeting. Advisory Plan Commission. Uh, no meeting in July. The next meeting will be August 19th, 7 p.m. here. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the reports? I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, right, we can do that. Yeah, okay. Uh, 22 permits were issued with fees of $3,061 collected on private costs of $175,455. Uh, there were three electrical permits for July totaling $355 with town revenue of $35.50. Legal expenses paid in July Second. 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 Second.
Okay, um, parking ordinance. So this is an ordinance that was just to disappear before us last month. Did you, you have had a couple of changes which are okay. reflected in the red line version that you have um, ultimately it's up to the pleasure what you do okay. you know, for the changes to the clean copy that you're inclined to and the red line. Did everybody get a chance to look at that? Yeah. So I guess it's up to us as to what we want to do with that. So I'll entertain a motion uh, as to whether we want to pass this ordinance. And this is a first reading, or you, you don't you even need it. Consider this okay. is the second uh, just one. meeting that we've done. We don't even need the unanimous consent to consider it. It's just kind okay. So do I hear a motion? Or any discussion? I I make a motion we move forward with the ordinance. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. So it's long, we'll sign it. Then the next one is the sign ordinance. And that's, uh, now this one is different. Yes. In that it, it comes to you with a favorable recommendation from the ABC. So your action is if, if you've made some changes that you've discussed and that you'd like to see. Right. So one is that you can put it down, take no action, you can send it back with your recommendations, paper of changes to change. Uh, it's it's all for a mandate to the ABC. And they have 45 days to then have a meeting and consider those changes and if they approve them as submitted, then, then that ordinance will become effective. So do I hear a motion to approve this ordinance with the changes that we made last month? I'll make that motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So it's sent to the APC. If they decide they like it, it becomes a new ordinance. Correct? Well, okay. Um, and the total ordinance has been published, correct? It has. So it is now, in fact, law. Yes. Okay. Uh, budget approval dates. Bill, is that yours? Yeah, uh, right now uh, we have to fill out a pre budget workshop, uh, and the pre budget gateway entry, I just picked 93 and 1014, which would coincide for the approval. I have, to, I have to go home and talk to my boss and see if I can be there. Okay. I, I will let you know. Well, I mean, yeah, the, the meeting, typically, although everybody is invited, the last couple of times we have two people in the audience, and the last time they came, they said it was the most boring thing that have yeah. done. So I don't think it's going to be something that will be. I mean, we've got 14 different funds that you have to look at, and, and the, the information is all available, and, and I can provide it to you well in advance. But my, the attendance is usually fairly low. Yeah. Well, so I'll go home and look at my calendar and if I can be here, I will. And I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay, all right. It can be filled. Yeah. Okay, well, we got you okay? Yeah. yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay. Uh, civic systems, work order software. Uh, we, uh, there is a, uh, there is a work order piece of software. The total cost of the software is $4,725. The uh, water department wishes to purchase that, so their their tab would be twenty three sixty seven fifty or something like that. So basically, it would be somewhere under twenty five hundred dollars would be the town's portion. I have spoken with our street superintendent Tom Dahl, and he would very much like to have something because right now we just have paper copies, of, you know, and he has to come into the office and get a get whatever we put in his inbox. So uh, uh, my recommendation would be we do have budget money that we can that we can put to this expenditure that we should have put to this expenditure for the town's portion of slightly less than 24 
So we need a motion for that? I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, there will be a coastal flood plain map open house that's going to be taking place on August 29th. That's a Thursday um, at the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore, 1100 Mineral Springs Rose. Basically, this is a place where people who live north of Lakeshore Drive can go look at their property on the new maps. They just came out with new flood insurance plain maps and see exactly how the new maps affect you and your flood insurance rates. So I think, Nick, I sent you an email to put that maybe on the website so anybody who lives northwest of Lakeshore Drive can go to that and talk specifically to FEMA about how it affects them. Um, Nick, you want to talk about the website? Yep. Pass this out. There's more, more than enough copies. And I'll have some extra copies if, if folks want to take a look uh, after the meeting here. So we've been working with the um, another Civic, it's called Civic, different Civic company, on the Newtown website. Let's just take one of those. And what I'd like to do is they propose an initial draft and I've proposed some additional modifications that I'd like them to make, and then I would have at the September meeting uh, present on the overhead for folks to be able to see, to walk through. You can just leave them on the side as extra copies if, if folks want to see. Um, it's going to change from that to what you see in September. Um, but what I wanted to share was uh, there's one version that you can see with, with Long Beach um, here, and I'll talk about some of the, the buckets that are on here. Um, and then there's a second version here from another um, entity, Auburn, Massachusetts. Um, there was one in particular that stood out as a slightly more modern look to it, and that's what he's going to try to move toward. But some of the changes on here you can see, and they do, this company does, um, called, they're called Civic Plus. They do websites for many municipalities across the country. They're working on Michigan City's new site about to be coming out, for example. But some of the, the improvements on the top, you can see uh, one, there's a tab for sort of the common questions around how do I, you know, get X? How do I get garbage bins when I'm a new resident? How, where do I go to pay my water bill? Just all of the basic questions under that how do I, how do I get a, a permit? Um, directory and hours, the water department, government, and then police and fire would have its own tab. Um, so what I'd like to do is, uh, he's gonna, this is just a screenshot of what the home page would look like with these main categories. And he's gonna further build out some of these areas and I'd like to get it in front of the police, department, the fire department, um, clerk treasurer's office to look through to make sure either A, are we missing things? B, are we prioritizing the right things we want to have on the home page? You know, for example, for what are the common questions when people come in and, in and out of the clerk treasurer's office, what are they looking for? to make sure it's easy to find. Um, another improvement here is uh, one spot for all permits in all forms. So that would just be in one location. One spot for all minutes and all agendas would be in one location. Um, there, you'd have a calendar section, new section, so much more basic. But the other key improvement is um, you don't have to have a background in HTML to, to make updates to the website. It'll be very intuitive in terms of how you can update it. And again, as we've talked previously, I'd like I'd like to be able to work with the clerk treasurer's office so that this can be transitioned moving forward to be updated so we can update minutes in a more timely fashion, that we can put um, news items in there in a more timely fashion. Um, so looking forward to it, excited that we can start to get to this direction here. Um, so I'll let it sit with you all if you've got other feedback or thoughts, but again, this is the initial draft and they're gonna move toward more sort of the look and feel that you see here. Um, the image in the background and that's actually from George Castle. He donated a photo um, image of Long Beach here to, to include, um, and we might uh, get other fo uh, other photographs to feature in there. So there's extra copies if folks want to take a look, but like I said, at the September meeting, um, I'd like to come back and have an overhead and kind of walk through some elements of what we might see. Good. Cool. Any questions? Well, I had two, two other things, or one other thing rather than came in there.
you know, and it's, and it's a, lot, a lot of cans, it's two cans every time you have to open the, open the, you know, the, the door and take them out and, and, you know, the good news is we move them off the street so that they're not, they're in compliance, but the bad news is it's, it's a walk from the truck and there's one driver and, uh, you know, when a resident pays for that service, they, you know, they go to their, they go and move the garbage can uh, out to the, to the truck, pick it up, and then roll it back. But, uh, you know, and so if there's anybody else who, you know, where the problem is, it's, it starts to be a little bit of a, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, there's some risk involved because you're, you're going on top property, so you fall, what's the, you know, take the garbage can. I mean, right now, the weather's fine, but, so what, what would this cover? The, the this, would cover this would be a thousand dollars a month. I'm sure we could probably do it for just the maybe the summer months, but because it's really I don't think months. this is such an issue no, during the winter time. But you know, but, but it, it definitely is a is a problem. And I I got the pictures. The drivers were taking pictures, and what's happening is people just figure that way I won't get I won't get a fine, so I'll just dump my car. Well, you know, a lot of communities have beach shops and they don't have toters at all. Yeah, I know. I, well, we, yeah. And they put up signs and say, tote garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, there's, there's some merit to that. I, I think uh, that's something we need to so I, Let's know, get I the information right now. Think it's, about. It's, a, it's a proposal that I would still would like to research with, with the Republic, but, uh, but I think we do need we're going to have to pay somebody something to get them from the enclosures to the street and back. Okay. So, um, could I please, when we were doing this total ordinance, it was, it was said that, that they would, the public would take those totals out and, and they're doing and put them back in. So obviously that was not true. Mm -hmm. So second thing is, I would rather pay our one of our town employees extra to do that rather than twelve thousand dollars a year for uh, a big huge mistake, you know. And now we're thinking maybe you don't even want the totals at the stops and rebuild those. So what I'm saying is is. I would like us to explore maybe paying a high school kid all through the summer to do that, or one of our employees who want to make an extra, uh, you know, five thousand a year or something else, but to pay the public twelve thousand dollars to see. Well, this is this is this is you know this is a total tax, not not republic. So I have not know. Oh, I'm sorry. This is this is a local. That company who sent out all the, that thing before, mm -hmm. and I just called him up and said, "Give me a price." And just, you know, oh, I see. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Can I just add something yeah. to that? The the pictures that they're showing at Stop 19, I had to go down and look at it, and it's not necessarily that the public services can't pull the tours out of the enclosure. But Tom filled another two toters full of trash. What Bill was saying is that the toters are full, they throw it in the enclosure. So now garbage is blocking the toters from being pulled out it's on the ground. <laughs> and so they actually have to clean it up before they get the toters out. And then to get yeah. the second one out, they're cleaning again. And then it's a, you know, it's. So hiring somebody, yeah, hiring somebody to take the toter out isn't going to fix that either. Right. Two out to the maintenance garage, and then the Republic Services came back on Thursday, stopped with the maintenance, and then went back to 19. So, with two toters and an enclosure, there was enough garbage in there for four 96 gallon trash, you know, just stuffed in there. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, I had a resident who lives on Chasselton who was concerned about all the deer crossing in front of her house and how uh, she was concerned about motorists, particularly not from the area, might be driving too fast around. <coughs> we all know to slow down whenever we see a deer or even before we see a deer. Um, she was requesting a deer crossing sign. I guess I'm, I'm wondering, should we maybe, just so the deer would know where to cross, you know? <laughs> but anyway. Maybe a sign at the three entrances to the town or the four entrances of town, just reminding motorists that there are deer everywhere. Um, I talked to the chief, he thought that would be a reasonable idea. Um, I don't know if we have to approve that at town council level, or can we just do that? Can I just mention I'm opposed to that. Any any unnecessary signs, I think we have way too many signs to begin with, that maybe we could do it through education some other way, but another sign, I just don't see the reason. Well, I think this would be to educate people who aren't familiar with the area, because okay. we do have a lot of summer guests who don't realize what we have. Um, do we need to make a motion? What did we decide? I, I'll move to put four deer signs up. Any second? Any discussion? Yeah, any discussion? I, I mean, I tend to agree. We haven't had any accidents. I mean, I tend to agree with Jane that it's another sign. I mean, we haven't had incidents. I don't know. That's my opinion. Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 I'll stay. Opposed. Opposed. All right, let's hold off on the signs for now. After we have an accident, we'll put them up. Um, then I also had a request from Dr. Annabelle Juhas. Uh, she's the chairman of the Land Conservation uh, Subcommittee. Uh, they've had issues with not having a quorum at their meetings. There's a Rachel, Rachel Stadler, who's a new resident of the community, who's very interested in serving that committee. I'd like to nominate her for that. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Congratulations, Rachel. <clears throat> okay, public comments. Oh, yeah, if you want to hear from me, I'm sure. Stand up, uh, go stand up just so they can get you in. Get uh, you. Uh, can see uh, you. Uh, 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 this was for you. There was an article in the news this past uh, several points. And in it, you say that the subject for homeowners <clears throat> chose to plow down the building so they could see the lake from their basement window. Yes. Now, if what you say is true, then the total level of the building to get a view from someone's basement shouldn't be allowed. Absolutely. So, okay. Mm -hmm. But I still think that we will lose the sand removal should be allowed. Wouldn't you agree? Here, here's the problem we run into, Bob, is, is you know, we've, we've got a couple issues. One is, you know, when you have a dune that's covered with mirror grass, that's the best protection from erosion. It's also the best protection from the wind-blown sand because the mirror grass actually catches the sand and the dune gets higher and it stops that sand from blowing. When you plow down that dune, there's nothing to stop it. And then the wind-blown sand, it becomes more of a problem on property, more of a problem for the erosion. The same problem happens with all these multiple access paths to the beach, you know, on our western edge, we have dunes. And every property, or many of them, have little paths going to the beach. Those little paths destroy the mirror grass, nothing catches the sand, and it causes much more of that sand to blow up on the private property. I think if we can stop those private paths, then I think we're going to have less of a problem. Now, as far as clearing off sand from sidewalks and things, I think our ordinance allows that, but or patios even. But as far as Changing the topography of the rest of the area, that's a violation of our top topographic order. So you don't have no problem with if there's sand on a seawall, I'm talking about a flat seawall, not a river. You have no problem with removal of that sand. Where is the sand at? I have a seawall. Yep. I have a double seawall. The first seawall is for engineers. Then there's a flat area. It's all concrete. Mm -hmm. Then there's another eight-foot high seawall, a second one. On that flat seawall, which is all concrete, I've got a buildup of sand that's probably two feet deep. That's covered the seawall. Well, it covers the deck area. I, 
know, I'd have to see what it looks like. Well, you know, or pick one. Yeah. But I mean, if you're altering the topography, that's not a lot. Well, it's not topography because well, if it's, it's two feet. Well, if it's a buried seawall, then the topography is no, what's over the top of it. Buried seawall. Well, I mean, again, I'd be. Well, I, I, yeah. I talked to. Uh, is a paragraph that's written in the back part. And that says, we need to protect our beaches from the politically connected and frankly moneyed interests that live on the north side of Lakeshore Drive. If you see any of these homes, you can probably tell that those homeowners are money. Okay? Now, that statement paints a negative picture using a broad brush that labels does it say all? Does it say all? I don't think the word all was in there. If you see any of these homes, you can probably tell that those homeowners are money. Yeah, so. The, well, I'm saying all. Okay. Because you're not, I'm not saying all. Now, here, here's the thing. If you would pick out a homeowner, use me, and you say, Bob, you're a rich guy, and I'm pointing my finger at you. That's acceptable. But when you take a broad brush and you point and you start painting 125 people, that's how they read it. I didn't say all. Oh, you don't have to say all. That's how it's implied. Well, uh, now, not what was intended. Well, let me explain something else to you. Money is a euphemism reserve for rich. Yes. Okay? And rich is a unit of measure. With the person saying he's using his own net worth as a benchmark, plain and simple, to Warren Buffett, we would not be rich, but to a homeless person, we are very wealthy. Plain and simple, again. So when you label any group of people using an opinion without knowing the facts, this is prejudicial. No different than attacking a group because of ethnic background, religious beliefs. And this type of prejudice has no place in common government, plain and simple. It shows bias and is especially troubling. Especially once promoted by a top president. Thank you for your opinion, Bob. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, good evening. Yeah, good evening. I need to have you come up here, Anita. Okay. They, they want everybody to come over here. Thank you, Can I just okay. go to a different corner with sure. Mr. Wall? Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Anita Ramages, 2300 Florimon. Um, one, I would just like to go back to what I believe um, President LeMay stated at last month's meeting or the month before, which is respect and civility. Um, again, I, I don't understand how we, how some of us present ourselves to a group of men and women who are working on behalf, who may not agree with everything they do, but I don't think that, 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 that I stand up here and say, well, it's me again. I, nobody is going after anybody in particular here. I think they're all working for our town. Um, and I, I just don't, I, I, to me, I just don't understand this notion of them against us and who's against us and who's for us. So um, I read that same article and maybe I'm rich. I don't even live on the lake. And maybe I'm considered rich to somebody who lives two doors down from me. There's my neighbor. So I don't know about that. Um, I'd like to say the metal stairs came up at last month's meeting at um, Stop 22. And I use those stairs every day. And I'm glad to hear that there are metal stairs that are replacing other stairs because I think they are a safer and a longer lasting option. Um, and again, I, I really would just kind of take a deep breath and let's just all listen and let's hope our council is working for all of us. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, I'd like to respond to that. Um, I have a difference of opinion, Anita. I think it's healthy for there to be debate and um, and differences, and I think it's everything that makes the United States. I, I don't think okay, that, well, just let, let, me let me say, I think that what I talk about was civility and respect. I don't believe I ever said that some that there's not debate allowed. That there, I mean, you're a council, you can't all meet other times. 
times. No. What I'm talking about is basic civility and respect for what the council does. I, I, I don't believe, and we could read it back, that I ever mentioned that debate is not an issue, that, that it certainly is welcome here. Well, your last words were, I feel we should listen and hope our council isn't. And I believe that that's a terrible civics lesson. And now, what did I say? to listen and hope our council will do the right thing. That is... Absolutely, for the town. Well, I want to say that I think that hoping is futile. That you have to ensure, and you ensure by asking questions, and, and even when it's uncomfortable, and I think that what we have here is is, I've been going to town council meetings for a long time, and I think it's healthy and and I don't I'm proud. Of I think that you're 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 going off somewhere, and all I was talking about was respect and civility. So I, you know, I, I absolutely welcome any discussion, any discussion at any time. Absolutely. Bob, you have public comment. I forgot to mention on Sunday, the eighth of September. An organization called Bolt for the Heart is going to be doing a 5K run walk. Starting in Washington Park, I'm not sure how far they're coming to Long Beach or they are at all. We'll be participating in it. But what their goal is is to put a defibrillator in every police car in the county. So that's to, put, to do what? To put a, put a defibrillator in every squad car in the county. So actually it's the, Organization started by a resident who grew up here and stopped doing one. Is that a good thing? Is there a, is there a way that we could get like a CPR course here in town? I mean, just for people in general. Would, could you do that? Could you set something up like that? Or, I mean, just something where the residents could come to the town center and give them a moment to put on a CPR program or something for any any health emergency health type program like that. I think would be a good thing. Defibrillator sounds great. Sure. Any other public comments? Uh, Mary Kowalski, Police Oregon. I just want to ask if there is a rule or ordinance about dogs at the town stops. Because I went to the beach, and I don't know too often, but a couple times in July on a weekday, and one day there was only like five groups of people. Three of them had big dogs. I had a little granddaughter, and the dogs were swimming in the water. My kids take, when they come, is that they can take their dogs down like at 6 a.m. or at 9 or 10 at night. But I was just surprised in the middle of the day that the town stopped. But I was kind of, I didn't want to say anything to them, but it did annoy me. Is there still yeah. an ordinance? Yeah, there is an ordinance, and they're not to be going down the stairs. Um, however, once they're on the beach, that's public trust property, and that's... That then they're kind of on their own and so on. And and so so. In, the, in the state code, at any of the swimming beaches, they have to be leashed by code. Well, they were they were shaking on, you know, getting up there. The people were laughing over that funny, but you know, we were getting sprayed by them. So. Yeah, I think that's a big area that we have to explore because other municipalities taking care of the beach, they're cleaning the beach, they're guarding people's safety on the beach, but because of the new ruling, we're just grappling with that, and I think that has to be explored legally, and that, um, that we, at least we can clean the beach, and we can make sure it's safe, and I think one of the measures to make it safe is that all dogs have to be leashed. Well, I did have a friend visiting uh, from California, and they said, you know, where, whatever, I don't know if it was a town or state, but their, you know, their beach was public, so there still was a local, I, I don't know if it was a local or a state, but the dogs were, even though it was public, dogs were I will, I will check with the DNR and find out exactly what the rules are for dogs on the beach. Other public comments? I'm Judy Frankis, I'm about staff 23. I just have a question, I'm not really even sure who would address it, but the, um, that big blue sewer pipe that's sticking out on staff 23, is, has that been addressed at all? Or just, is there, is there, because whenever it rains, there's just dirty water shooting out of the back of that thing, and, yeah, well, 
from the street and, and the problem is is that you know the water comes down the hill and it has nowhere to go right and that is what uh, was done is there any way to shorten it because I, I, I believe it probably was very bad to do it on the way to be well, most all of it yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> and now it's just it's almost 10 feet to end and yeah. I think that is a problem we have to address because before it was in the natural uh, sand doing that naturally filtrated right that and now it's going right into the lake. Right. And it has to be. Now, right. yeah. Last Fourth of July, like rocks and dirt, everything was just shooting out here because there was a big pour, pouring rain and coming off the street. It just doesn't seem like it's very sanitary for that to be on the beach. So I was just wondering about that, if it can be shortened or slowed down, perhaps, so that it's not. Is that, a, is that a building commission matter? Is that a is probably a street department matter uh, to look at it and come up with a plan? The other thing is we met for months with Hassan Associates and trying to come up with a way to make that street drainage go into the earth, maybe up at the street level. But then the park department went and designed a big pipe from the street all the way to the beach. It was completely ignored, everything we did. With, with the research we did with Hassan Associates, paid good tax money. And, and um, so it really has to be addressed. It has to be taken seriously and addressed that we're only putting street drainage into the sand and not right into the lake. <laughs> I, I will uh, take it on myself. I'll check this with Tom. And I know that when when this that that's, that uh, stuff was uh, redone, uh, IDEM, which is really the one who determines what can go into the lake, that's the Indiana Department. Right. Uh, I will double check with them to see to make sure that what's going in there is legal. That they've approved it. Uh, if we want to take steps beyond that, we will. IDEM never approved it, Pete. Now. You can, you know, do all the little chatting that you want, but I can never okay that. It was a, 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 a do-it-fast big pipe that was put under the stairs without any thought of what those engineers told us. And now it's 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 um, eroding the beach when it comes down. You know, so let's just take this seriously and not listen to one person who has given us no proof that what they did was sane or uh, uh, regulated. Yeah, I'll, I'll just make one final comment. IDEM approves all drainage into the lake. If they didn't approve it, they would let us know. So I, I will double check with them right. and, and we'll be done with it. Other public comments. One more thing on 23. I noticed that the new people on the west side of this class there were using the dune to come down, and it looked like they're building something up there. Has, has anybody spoken to them about what's going on here? I think they were putting in a, uh, a uh, retaining wall, and we issued a stop work order because they didn't have a permit to do that. So they apply for a permit then? Uh, they will apply. I don't think they're going to get it because okay. they were building the retaining wall on town property, and that's not going to fly. Okay. Um, yeah, but you're right. Their that. children were abusing it. They're, they're residents. Like I said, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt. I didn't know, but I just wanted to make sure that that was addressed. Yes. So. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Tina Kelts, 2004, I just wanted to thank the board for the ordinance we passed about not allowing chairs and things at the beaches. So stop 20 is so beautiful now. And 18, those are the two stops I go to. Such an improvement. I just want to thank you. I agree. Other
other public comments? Council comments? No. Claims approval. One item that I wanted to bring up to the council. Uh, on Friday, I got five months of, of, of uh, Larry Wall's uh, timesheets, and I would like to not wait until the third or tenth or whatever it would be. Because that's it's an awfully long time. To, you know, and as, if you can approve them, I would like the council to approve as I read these minutes. Plus, Larry Wall's, it's about seven or eight thousand dollars. You want a motion for us to approve? Yeah, I don't know why. Not just to do it, but yeah, I think he just didn't turn in his timesheets. Yeah, Actually, the town was able to no, turn in just all that money. So, for so, so, so this is going to be a real number plus five, five large all permits. So you need a motion from us? We so. work on that. I think we just do it. All right, just do it. The check number 16494 through 16583 totaling 142000 Salaries for July 2019 were $70,825.38. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any other issues? If not, I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.